it would not surprise me if you've participated in a focus group. I've certainly participated in a number in my days. Actually, I think I've been a participant in more focus groups than I've actually carried out a focus group. A focus group is where you get people together to focus, see the issue, on a particular topic, right? And so instead of speaking to people one at a time about something, you speak to them together in a group. On the one hand, a focus group has a lot of efficiency benefits over something like an interview because you talk to a lot of people at one time, right? You can have 15 participants, but you only need to speak to them at one point in time. On the other hand, sometimes in a focus group, people will build off each other. Somebody will say something and then someone else will build to that and that. And so you'll be ending up developing a bigger idea of what's happening than you might have just one on one, right? Because people are listening to and exchanging from each other. On the other hand, focus groups can result in groupthink, right? Someone can get to a situation where they've heard everybody else say something is an issue, so they feel compelled to say that it's an issue too. Or they've heard everybody say they disagree with something, so they don't feel comfortable saying that they agree with it, right? There is a tendency when people are in groups for them to agree with each other, right? Sometimes there'll be strong-minded people who will be capable of disagreeing. Sometimes you can even get arguments in a focus group, which is uncomfortable. But in this whole process, you can learn about what people think. You have to kind of worry if their ideas are sticking too closely together, right? One of the other problems with the focus group is that the people in the group can see each other and talk to each other. So if you're asking about things that might be sensitive or that people might not want to reveal, being in a focus group can actually be very worrisome for people. They might not want to say that they've broken the law. They might not want to say that they've violated a norm. They might not want to say that they've done something that people will feel like they might discriminate against them for, right? And they might feel compelled to perform for the other people in the room. On the other hand, sometimes if you're dealing with sensitive issues, being together in a group of other people who've experienced similar things sometimes can make you feel much more free, right? If the first person steps up and says they've done something that was challenging or that broke norms, then other people can feel more free to say, oh, I can do that too. All of this is to say, there's a lot of differences in how focus groups can go, and you don't really know how it's going to go until it starts going. However, if you're looking for something where you'd like to get some efficiency of people discussing with each other, where you think crosstalk would matter, or where you think people might drive some kind of solidarity or some kind of energy from working together in a group, then a focus group definitely might be your friend. Right? So in this section, I'm going to think about when you would run a focus group, what makes a focus group research different from interview-based research or survey research, and how you might design focus groups to work for your project.